Well, it's uh, Monday, December 2nd, and Roxanne's deconstruction continues. Uh, in our last video, uh, we showed how the bottom half of the transom was kicked out. Well, John will share with you what he's discovered. We're finding a little bit of uh, 5200 packed in the seam here, but it doesn't really look like the 5200 we used today. And there's quite a bit of it in here. There we got big chunks of it packed into the crack. What we're going to do is remove the bottom plank of the two plank uh, transom completely because we've also discovered, John also discovered that inside over the years <laughs> people have just packed more and more chunks of wood in but paid no attention to the proper location. Uh, we've opened these two planks because if you remember from an earlier video these were uh, replacement planks that were done really badly. Um, it doesn't stop there. In fact, it gets more interesting. You see that on the port and the starboard sides, uh, we have a bunch of planks missing. Well, that's because some repair, that's in repair in quotes, person or persons uh, must have had an issue with the planks failing, the, two, the, the garboard and the next plank out failing on both sides of the keel. So the first thing they did was simply to cut the planks off at the same point, both fore and aft, which is an absolute no-no. And then they just took one wide board, cut a bunch of curf, saw curves in it, to try to bend it. Well, that all failed. And then, I don't know if it was the same uh, geniuses, but this is where the prop shaft <laughs> runs. That was at one time solid wood. And there's a copper pipe right here. That used to go in. But you see that the pipe only extended part way and was flopping around and the, the cutlass bearing which was out here has completely failed. There was no pack, packing left in it at all. So as a result, whenever this boat was in the water, water was continually running up through the prop shaft fitting into this space and simply rotted it all out. Uh, the, at the very least, these people could have purchased some copper tubing that reached all the way to the back of the boat, but I guess they decided to use whatever they found. Uh, so what we're going to have to do is route out a dado around this on both sides and uh, fill in with solid wood and then rebore the hole all the way through. This fitting is no longer round. You can see how it's all worn on one side. So we will have our machinist put a bushing in there and fix that. Uh, but we're going to put the cutlass bearing at the upstream end of the prop shaft where it belongs so that uh, Karen and Dick can inspect it from time to time and make sure that it is slowly dripping water as they're supposed to. Right here. We have a piece of the keel has been added to extend the keel. So, I mean, when they push this board out, this... I don't know what they decided there. 
That is an odd thing. We'll have to epoxy it back together. Or just replace this or plank. Or replace the plank a little ways forward. I don't know what their intention of this little thing was. Oh. It has something to do with, like you said, see, because this is the amount the, keel sh the transom should have been pushed back in. And this is taking up the... The space. Space. So it's their little spacer for not pushing the transom back where it goes. Interesting. Interesting. For sure. Uh, we're hoping by the end of today we've got this transom plank freed, but the problem is uh, the one thing that these people seem to have lots of is 5200. So behind this plank from about here to here all the way across where all these fasteners were it's also almost solid 5200. So we're going to have to carefully excise that because we the last thing we want to do is split this plank. I'm, we're not going to find another plank from 1914 and these two planks on this transom are almost certainly original. So that's the news from Snake Mountain Boatworks on uh, Monday, December 2nd.